If you've ever found yourself standing in the garden, rice water in one hand and compost tea in the other, wondering which one actually feeds your soil life better, you're not alone. I've been there too, curious, skeptical, and ready to put these two microbial elixirs to the test. What started as a simple experiment in my garden turned into one of the most eye-opening comparisons I've ever done. So, grab your gloves, fellow soil lover, because today, we're uncovering which of these two powerful brews truly fuels your soil's living engine. Rice water and compost tea are both beloved by gardeners for one reason, they bring life to the soil, but what if I told you that one of them actually outperforms the other in boosting microbial activity, root growth, and overall plant health? Before diving into the test results, let's quickly understand what we're really working with here. Rice water is the starchy liquid left behind after rinsing or boiling rice. It's rich in carbohydrates, trace minerals, and some amino acids. Basically, a mild energy drink for soil microbes. Many gardeners swear by it for waking up tired soil, encouraging microbial bloom, and boosting plant vigor naturally. Compost tea, on the other hand, is made by steeping finished compost in water, often with a little molasses or aeration. It's a microbial soup, full of beneficial bacteria, fungi, and nutrients extracted from the compost. It's been the gold standard for feeding the soil food web for years. But how do they actually compare in a real soil test? That's where our shocking experiment comes in. In the true Soil Sage Chronicle spirit, I decided to test both fluids side by side under the same conditions. Here's what I did. I took three identical containers filled with the same garden soil mix. Into one, I poured rice water once a week. Into the second, compost tea. The third was left untreated as a control. All three pots were planted with the same type of young kale seedlings, a reliable fast-growing plant that reveals soil health quickly. The environment was kept consistent. Same sunlight, same watering schedule, no fertilizers or extra nutrients. The goal? To see which brew produced stronger, healthier plants and richer soil biology. And the results after four weeks? Absolutely fascinating. By week two, I started noticing a difference. The compost tea plants were growing taller and looked slightly darker green. Classic signs of good nitrogen uptake. The rice water plants on the other hand had shorter but bushier growth with thicker stems. But the real magic showed up in the soil itself. When I pulled out the seedlings after four weeks and gently brushed off the soil, the roots in the rice water pot were surrounded by a fine web of white fungal threads. Mycorrhizae. The soil smelled earthy and alive. Under a microscope, the rice water sample revealed a surge in bacterial colonies feeding on those starch residues, essentially a microbial party. In contrast, the compost tea soil had a more balanced ecosystem. Plenty of bacteria, protozoa, and fungal spores, but fewer fresh fungal hyphae than the rice water soil. The compost tea plants looked greener and lusher, but the microbial activity was slightly less explosive. So. What's going on here? So, the reason rice water performed so strongly actually has to do with how microbes feed. Soil microbes, you know, need food, which is carbon, plus moisture and oxygen to really thrive. Compost tea delivers ready-made microbes and nutrients. It basically inoculates your soil with life. Rice water, on the other hand, feeds the existing microbes already living there, encouraging them to multiply rapidly. It's kind of like the difference between hiring new workers, which is compost tea, versus giving your current team a huge bonus, like rice water. Both approaches build a stronger system, but they do it in different ways. The starch in rice water acts as a carbon source, fueling bacterial growth and fungal development. It's sort of like an instant energy shot for the microbial community. Compost tea, though, brings in diversity and balance. It populates the soil with beneficial organisms that improve structure and disease resistance. So, while compost tea supplies the army, rice water feeds and energizes the troops already in the field. Now, here's the real-world takeaway. Which should you use? Well, here's the truth that might surprise you. Neither one is better all the time. Instead, they actually complement each other beautifully. Use compost tea when you're starting a new bed, transplanting, or revitalizing poor soil that's been stripped of life. It introduces beneficial microbes and builds a solid biological foundation. Then, once your soil is active, use rice water as a regular microbe booster. 
It keeps your microbial community fed and thriving between compost tea applications. So, in short, compost tea is your microbial inoculant, and rice water is your microbial food source. Together, they create a thriving, self-sustaining soil ecosystem, one that can outcompete pests, resist disease, and produce nutrient-dense crops year after year. All right, if you want to try this at home, here are a few simple guidelines that can really make all the difference. First, don't overdo the rice water. Use it no more than once a week and always make sure it's diluted. That's one part rice water to three parts plain water. Too much can actually create anaerobic conditions and sour the soil, which, trust me, you don't want. Next, keep your compost tea fresh. Use it within 24 hours of brewing while the microbes are most active. Store-bought or stale tea just loses its potency really fast. Then, combine your approaches strategically. Apply compost tea after major soil disturbance, like tilling or transplanting, and then maintain with rice water feedings every week or two. Always observe your plants. Soil biology doesn't lie. If your plants look vibrant, roots are spreading, and the soil smells sweet and earthy, you're definitely on the right track. And finally, always feed the soil not just the plants. Healthy soil biology leads to plants that can naturally resist pests, access deep nutrients, and, honestly, produce better flavor and yield. So, why does all this matter? Well, every time we pour something onto our soil, we're influencing a hidden world just absolutely teeming with life. Microbes are really the true builders of fertility. They break down organic matter, release nutrients, and create the structure that roots depend on. By choosing natural brews like rice water and compost tea, we're not just saving money, we're actually partnering with the living ecosystem beneath our feet. We're becoming stewards of a regenerative cycle that honestly gives back more than it takes. And that's really what Soil Sage Chronicles is all about. Practical, proven, and sustainable soil wisdom that any gardener can use, whether you're tending a small balcony garden or a thriving food forest. Now, here's the final verdict, the shock that really changed my soil game. After weeks of observation, the clear takeaway was this, rice water sparked faster microbial growth, but compost tea built deeper, longer-lasting soil health. So, if I had to choose the best fluid for soil microbes, I'd say, use both, and do it strategically. Compost tea to seed your soil with life, and rice water to keep that life thriving. The combination is just pure microbial magic. The test was definitely a shocker, but it also proved something we soil lovers already know deep down. There's no shortcut to living soil. It's all about nurturing a balance of diversity, energy, and care. If you found this experiment insightful and want to see more real garden tests like this one, make sure to subscribe to Soil Sage Chronicles on YouTube. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a new soil secret and go ahead and share this article with a fellow gardener who's serious about growing naturally. Because when we understand the soil we grow more than just plants, we grow life itself.